Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another season of the Sony Cup Series. It starts here. The 24th annual Daytona 500. This marks the 8th year of the Sony Cup Series tomorrow, March 9th. Will be 8 years of running this running the series. March 9th, 2012, Jackson Braun passed Richard Johnson on the final lap to become the first ever Daytona 500 champion. And ever since then, 22 other 22 other times we have crowned a Daytona 500 champion 23 times this race has been decided now the 24th race for the Daytona 500 this is the 24th season of the Sony Cup Series the 2020 season overall points and everything in the championship race it all starts here points matter all season what happens and with the new rule of the point system for this year of needing to at least complete 50% of the race to even get counted for points. It's important. Points matter and finishing results matter more than anything being there at the end. And this race means a whole lot, really, in terms of being there at the end. You have to be there at the end to win this race. The Daytona 500 is 500 miles, given the 500 in the name of it. 500 miles for this race compared to a 150 mile race which is the norm for a sony cup series race usually these guys are only going door to door for 150 miles well it is 500 miles and this race you cannot go wide open you cannot be beating and banging early on you have to be thinking long term these guys are hungry for a win in the Daytona 500. If you win this race, you're remembered your entire career as a Daytona 500 champion. Chris Dodd comes in this race as the defending champion, and he is forever known as a Daytona 500 champion. Now, it means so much to your career to be known as a 500 champion. And many, dri many drivers on the grid today are hoping to get their second Daytona 500 victory and so, there's a driver on the grid as well hoping to get their third 500 win. Sean Perkins is back, and then there's some other drivers like Richard Johnson and Eric Burton. They've never won the race, and they've won many races before in the Sony Cup Series. This race brings in drivers and teams all over, even drivers that have raced prior and made a career out of it. They're coming back. And they all, uh, every driver wants to win this race. It's a special race. Now, let's get ready to start the Daytona 500 and kickstart the 2020 season. Now, the Daytona 500, as the field gets ready to make its pace lap. As you hear these cars come to life. 42 drivers, all with one goal in mind to win the Daytona 500. Most races, teams and drivers alike have possibly different goals in mind as many drivers and teams do not have the same ambitions because the goal for many drivers on different tracks like in Atlanta, like a Texas, like a Watkins Glen, the goal possibly could be a top 10 or a top 20 or top 30 day but the Daytona 500, even for guys starting out back, guys that barely made this race, they're hoping they built a car that's capable of hanging in the draft today and making it count at the end. Nobody is thinking really about points today. I think this is the one race you can afford a mulligan in the championship. No driver, I believe, is worried about that today. It is about winning the Daytona 500, the great American race. Now in seasons past, carnage strikes early. Drivers trying to get up towards the front. It is very important in this race <clears throat> to be further up in the lead pack right before pit stops happen. Because once pit stops happen after the first green flag pit stop, that usually tells the tale for who will be contending for the Daytona 500. It is so important as the field comes off turn four. Another season. This is the eighth year of doing this. The 24th season. This is about to get underway. Dylan Schwellenberg, Eric DeMax. 
the future of the series. They came up through the Hardys National Series together. They're on the front row together. They're going to take the field to green for the 2020 season. We're underway. Down the back straightaway for the first time today, Eric Demax trying to make a move on Dylan Schwellenberg for the race lead. Now being up front, like I mentioned, is very important and you see cars already a little bit spread out. Guys giving and taking, giving some room and I think you can expect that early in the race. Many drivers have seen and have known in the past that carnage can happen early on when you're bunched up like this, when you have 42 cars nose to tail in a big pack. This track, however, is very rough and very bumpy. It is not like Talladega. You have to lift in the corners. And here comes Dejon Weeks looking to make a move here. He has a fast race car. Dejon Weeks won his dual qualifier. Same with Jordan Davis. Past teammates. Davis a turn of performance driver for this season. But Weeks with his teammate of Dylan Schwellenberg down to the inside. Many drivers are hoping for some Good luck for this race and hoping for a fresh start. So many drivers further back and new rides and new faces and different rides. This could be a big day for some drivers. Further back, losing the pack here on lap five. Alexander Rowe for Flying Aces Racing. I don't think this was the plan for them. Same with Vince Freeze and Vance Codwell. They're losing the pack a little bit with Dom Caps, Daniel Bouchard and Samuel England. They have lost touch with these guys. Sean Harple is currently at the tail end of the lead pack right now, but up front, it is still Dejon Weeks leading the pack around, and he is holding a commanding lead right now. It is very easy to defend your race lead when, on this racetrack. Daytona used to not be like this. The package we had last year, it was not at all a, a package that you could defend your line because this track, the, the way the cars sucked up last year, it was just impossible to defend. But Dayton Weeks out front, he's able to control both lines and the track here for Daytona. And this package for Daytona allows many multiple grooves. As you see, Eric Demax getting a run around Jordan Davis, who is on the inside line. He gets back up to third. Schwellenberg and Demax looking very quick early on. Same with Dayton Weeks, obviously. He's out front. Jordan Davis, Jake Bassinger, Ryan Acosta, they're still all up here. Every driver that started in the top 10, they're still up here fighting on lap six. Nobody is drifting backwards. I'm looking a little further back. We're here on lap seven, but these guys further back, like Jeffrey Lynn, like Ryan, Agri like Ryan Griffin, even Richard Johnson there in the 55, Luke Martin. These are guys that have shown their hand during speed weeks. They have shown that they have very fast race cars. And here we see Ryan Griffin in a 43 car, the car that won seven times last year. He's going to the inside of Richard Johnson now pushing Jeffrey Lynn, but they do not need to lose that pack, but possibly playing it safe right now, trying to make sure they do not get involved in the big one, and they're trying to make sure they stay out of any collisions that may happen in front of them. Further up for the lead, Eric Demax in his 10 Heinz Toyota, looking to take the lead from Dage on Weeks. But here comes Jordan Davis up to the high side, trying to give a little bit of assist there to Dejon Weeks. Weeks may possibly be able to stay ahead of Eric Demax, and he will. That just goes to show the little bubble of air that between the race cars they have, that's a little push. The, the air in between those cars give that just enough of a ump to stay in front of these guys, and Weeks manages to stay out front. But I'm gonna look a little further back. These guys have lost the draft. Richard Johnson, Carson Scott, Sean Harple, they've lost the draft, and still a little further back, Jeffrey Lynn and Ryan Griffin, lap 12, along with Sean Perkins, they've all drifted backwards, and Scott Roush has also fell down the wayside here. He's at the tail end of the field, but there's also some guys like James Shelley, Dylan Young, there's Matthew Rodriguez there. They are not in a hurry right now to make it up towards the front, and we know some of these guys are very quick but they're choosing not to rush up to the front at the moment. We may be able to see a lead change here now. 
Eric Demax has been trying to get around Dejan Weeks. And Eric Demax, he does have a very fast Toyota. To the inside of Dejan Weeks, Davis is a little bobbling up there on the high side. Car Cody Lamas in the four car really didn't handle all that well on the bottom. You see him wash up the racetrack. And Demax is not getting the assist he needs from Schrollenberg. And Davis gives the shove to Weeks back into the lead. To be very careful though, where Dejon Week says he got a little too out front. Here comes Ryan Acosta. Here comes Jake Bassinger. Bassinger going back up the high side though with Dejon Weeks. He'd rather help Weeks, but he sees that the momentum's on the inside with Ryan Acosta. And Acosta, who came very close to winning his dual qualifier, he's really struggled in the Daytona 500 in years prior. But here he is early on, and he's actually in the lead. Tries to throw a block there on Jake Bassinger. Bassinger, we've documented his struggles to make it through Tech. And he's on the inside, trying to take the lead. He kind of bobbles there on the inside. It's going to go three wide for the back for second place. Acosta hangs on to the lead, and Weeks shoving him. They're fixing to run up on Samuel England. He's going to be the first lap car of the day. But here comes Dejon Weeks back. Right now, Dejon Weeks, early on, is showing his hand that he is a very fast race car as he powers his way back to the lead, and they're going to, they're going to run up on Samuel England. How is this going to fare early on? Well, England has been up, put up high, and Jake Bassinger, Cody Lamas, that's not where they want to be, but here comes Fitzwater. He takes a peek to the inside, but tucks right back in on Cody Lamas. But this moves up a few guys that have been running about midfield for the back of this lead pack. James Silverfox is there, John Arndt, the defending winner of this race, Chris Dodd's there, Bobby Jones is in the picture now, and Jordan Davis has a heck of a run on the outside of Ryan Acosta there. He's looking to get up alongside and trying to pass Dage on Weeks. Weeks continues to play both sides. Problems further back for Ryan Griffin. Ryan Griffin is out of the race and out of the Daytona 500. Griffin, we thought he was just holding back, but maybe it was a mechanical issue for the Allen Family Racing Team car. And Ryan Griffin is going to be the first retirement of this race due to an engine failure. Another engine as well, it's just blew up. That's Richard Johnson in the Red Bull Toyota. So engines are expiring early on in this Daytona 500. The, the heat is a little bit up here at Daytona International Speedway, so it is a little hot for these cars, but I don't expect that to be a, a trend here, but it is very interesting that two race cars, two different manufacturers, two different teams, like, it's early on, not even 20 laps in. Fast forwarding a little bit throughout the race. Lap 27, you're seeing three cars starting to pull away. That's Dejon Weeks, that's Dylan Schwellenberg, and Eric Tamax. They are pulling the gap there on Bobby Jones, Jordan Davis, Ryan Acosta. Those three race cars have been very fast all speed weeks, and especially in their dual qualifiers. And Eric Tamax is looking for a run, but they are trying to get a run further back. How about Charles Sanford and, and James Silverfox there? The Monster Energy cars, Monster Energy, and Red Bull Racing. Those, ra those race cars have struggled. They've been very inconsistent, but Sanford and Silver Fox, they've been pretty solid in their duels, and they have caught these guys. They've made it about an eight-car train at the front, and here's the defending champion of this race, Chris Dodd, trying to lead a big pack. They'll run them back down. Dylan Schwellenberg now wants his turn at the front, and Dylan Schwellenberg's going to try and take the lead from his teammate there, but they are pulling the gap from the, further, from the guys further back. Let's see here. That's only eight cars at the front of the pack, like we mentioned. Schwellenberg getting the push from Eric Demax there to go out front, but not so fast. Watch this. This 38 car really handles through the corner, and you need a car that can handle through the corners like that. It's a car that you can just hold it wide open through the bumps and not have to lift, and that 38 car is on rails right now, flying away from this pack. Trouble for Dylan Young, one of the Yamp Motorsports cars is on pit road. We're hearing that there was probably a battery that died on that one car as he came to a stop on pit road. And Young, he's getting a battery change, I would assume there for Dylan Young. That's what we've been told here in the booth. 
for Dylan Young and his Hooters Ford. He was so fast all speed weeks. He hasn't been up there with his teammates quite yet, but we know that's a fast race car and his chances of winning the Daytona 500 for a second time is over. However, further up for the lead, Eric DeMax and his 10 car is coming down pit road all by himself. I would assume this is an early pit stop. He's all by himself. Nobody else is coming down pit road other than a few guys further back in the second half of the pack. So Eric DeMax not getting any help whatsoever. Nobody came down pit road with the 10 in the lead eight cars. Dylan Young has returned to the race, but he will be three laps down in his Hooters Ford. That is seriously going to hurt him. However, with the rules the Sony Cup Series have for the point situation, you need to complete half the race in order to get points for the event. And Dylan Young is going to do that if he gets out there and runs at least half the race. He's not going to win the race, but he will get points, and you never know what will happen. Pit stops are unfolding. Many guys are on pit road, led by Jesse Turner, John Art, Jess, uh, Jordan Fisher. Many drivers up in front of them. The leaders are on pit road. Dejon Weeks is there. Dylan Schwellenberg has an inherited the lead there. And second place is James Sower Fox. And there's Eric DeMax in the 10 car. He's coming back out on the racetrack there in the 10. Many cars flying right by him. But we're going to see how Dylan Schwellenberg fares in comparison to where everyone else plays. After pit stops, pit stops are looking like they're organizing themselves out here. No incidents on pit road. And it seems as though everything worked out fine like everyone was intending. However, the Yamp cars are out front and they're looking tough to beat for today's race. Dejon Weeks out front. Dylan Schwellenberg to the inside looking to take the lead. He's in second. Jordan Davis, a dual qualifier winner last Thursday. He's there in third. And then further back and forth, Bobby Jones is up in the pitcher. He's in fourth place. Then it's Eric DeMax in fifth. That didn't hurt him all too much. And then you have James Sewerfox in the 77. Those, those paint schemes are going to be a pain to cover all season. They look, they are identical, just has different numbers there. 77 Sewerfox, he's up there in the mix of things in the top 10. And then further back, Eric Burton's in the middle of this. We haven't talked about Eric Burton all race long yet. But he is in the pack, and that's what you got to do. You got to maintain and stay in the mix. Burton weaving and bobbling down the straightaway, though. Brian Acosta is there with him. Then Charles Sanford and Jesse Turner. Ten cars are in this lead pack. And then further back, how about Matthew Rodriguez? We haven't talked about him all day. He's been hanging out back, but he's there with Jeff James, Cody Lamas, and Caleb Hoffman. Fourteen cars have a draft here, but James Shelley in the 71 car. Luke Martin to zero. Vince Breeze is a lap down, but they have lost touch of those leaders. And then there's a second pack further back. Jake Bassinger, John Art, Dylan Young's three laps down. Zachary Fitzwater, Jordan Fisher, Chris Stodd, DJ Curtis, Kyle Collins, and Alex Bignanco are in these guys at the second pack. And then some more guys that are going to need a caution to catch back up because they're going to fall a lap down at this rate. Zayden Davidson there with Jack Hallett. They're 25th, 26th. Hayden Klein, he has help from Hannah Allen. Samuel England's a lap down. And there's uh, Jeffrey Lynn, the 76, with Sean Perkins. That's 30 cars there. And then further back, Scott Roush all by himself. And then there's a big pack of cars with some lap cars, and the guys all bunching up again. But this is the race for the lead. Dylan Schwellenberg has it. Bobby Jones is in second. But Eric DeMax with a big assist there from Dave John Weeks down the straightaway. Going to try and get the second, but couldn't do it there. Bobby Jones could be a threat here for the Daytona 500 with a Turner performance power under the hood there. He came close to winning in the July race back last year. He's in second, but Eric DeMax, who sat on the outside of the front row, trying to go back up to P2. The leaders have ran up on Scott Roush, and he went a lap down, and that has bunched the field up and has left the four cars to trail away. Bobby Jones in fourth. And Dayton Weeks again. That is such a fast race car. Dayton Weeks past his teammate. He is he has got to be the favorite at this junction of the race. Back out front, he has led so many laps early on, and that is going to be the toughest guy to beat. Eric Demax is fast too. You can tell in that ten car. Schrollenberg is too. Jordan Davis is pretty quick as well. But I don't know. There is not many guys that seem like they can challenge that 38 as we come to a fourth of the way through this race. 
Weeks is looking so fast. Caution is out on the speedway. Alex Benyanko has been in a crash off a of turn two. And it looks like it's been a nasty one. That's a hard hit for Benyanko. Zachary Fitzwater again in another heavy crash there in the Foster's Toyota. Many other drivers, Zayden Davidson, he's also involved. Caleb Hoffman, the defending 500 winner. Chris Dodd's in there. Jake Bassinger's creeping across the line in a beat up 97 bang Ford. Been banged around on the back straight away. We're gonna get a replay. This incident starts way down in turn one, ends in turn two, and it starts way further back, but Jesse Turner gets into Hoffman. The old teammates there. Hoffman spins around. He's involved in a crash there, but it, there's a Rex even further down the facility. Down in turn two, big crash there. Man, we're gonna have to get replays on both collisions because that was a heavy hit there for Chris Stodd, pilot in the Hoffman. Another view of it. Turner just kind of moves up the racetrack. I don't think he was, he kind of bottomed out there in turn one, just got up into Hoffman. There was more crashing further down in turn two, but we're gonna get a look at this one. That's a hard hit there for Chris Stodd. Runs right into the back end of him. Curtis is there. Mini drivers, Fisher's there in the two car. A lot of cars, Kyle Collins is in there too. Mini drivers his chances of the 500 done. Gonna get another slow-mo of it. Hoffman, I don't know what he thought he was thinking. Coming back on the racetrack, that might be looked at by the officials because what are you thinking there? And Dodd gets hit by Curtis, hit again. I think that's Fitzwater in the 22. But many cars come piling in, Curtis involved. Fitzwater was the car. Curtis riding Bassinger and the 22 of Fitzwater. A hard hit for Curtis as well. Benyanko, a pretty nasty front end lick for him. But many guys crashed up on the back straightaway. Going to try and get a replay as well of what happened further down. Turner and Hoffman get together. And Jeff James on the apron. Oh, he gets hooked there by Daniel Bouchard. Up the racetrack into Bouchard. Bouchard and Jeff James look like they're the only ones that really got crashed there off turn two by themselves, but there was a bigger crash behind them. On board with our defending champion, Chris Dodd. On board with the defending champion of this race, Chris Dodd. Golly. That is something you hate to see here at Daytona. That is a hard hit down in turn two due to some reckless driving. And that is not something you would like to see. On board with Zachary Fitzwater. And I was wondering what happened to Zayden Davidson. I knew he was on pit road and crashed. Here's what happened to him. Rushed up on the incident. Pinyanko tried to pull away in the middle of the track. And Davidson kind of coming at full speed, trying to pick up some positions. They are under caution, however, and they're trying to race back to the start finish line. But Davidson and Halleck, their chances of the 500 are over. And there's a few other guys that I thought may have been involved in that as well, but really it's only Davidson and Halleck. They take the bullet there while Klein, Hannah Allen, and Sean Perkins pull away with very minimal and if no damage. After a lengthy cleanup, we are going to get back and on the way for a restart. Weeks, Schrellenberg, Davis, and Sanford, along with Silver Fox, are up there as well. Going to get another view of it. Rodriguez, Lamas, Martin, and Jones, and the 10 car, Barrett Demax, they are all in the top 10. This pack continues to mix and shuffle behind them, but the Amp Boys continue to dominate the front of the pack. Jordan Davis with help from Charles Sanford trying to get up there and contend for the lead. Sanford on a different strategy it seems. I don't know really where he came from though. Sanford in the Red Bull colors. Can they do what they did in 2016? Win on debut. That would be huge for that race team. Sitting there in fourth place. Fifth place, Matthew Regas. He's kind of came out of nowhere. There he is. 
underneath the lap car of um, Alexander Rowe. Dylan Schwellenberg looking at the inside on his team, but he's a little too low there. But he's got some friends there. The inside, trying to get around his Gamp teammate. Those cars have been so fast. Lap 64, Sanford up high with Weeks, but it doesn't look like he's got enough help there. And Jordan Davis is going to shove Dylan Schwellenberg to the lead. Schwellenberg's at the front of the field trying to play both sides. Here comes Rodriguez. Matthew Rodriguez trying to get up here and win his second Daytona 500. Not even halfway in the race yet, but he has came to the front after being in the back of the field. And here comes Weeks as a heck of a runoff turn two and flies down into turn three with the race lead. Oh, that's going to be a bad, fast car to try and beat. And here comes Davis trying to pinch Rodriguez down. Slides back up in front of Sanford. Sanford doesn't really know where he wants to go there. He's going to push Davis. The high outside line has proved to be very good. Sanford's got help from Silver Fox. Silver Fox with a great run in this race. The 2017 winner of the Daytona 500. Sanford's won this race in season nine too. Rodriguez has won this race before. Schwellenberg and Weeks never a Daytona 500 winner. Can they get it done today for Yamp Motorsports? The only driver on that team that has done that is Dylan Young. And Young is pretty much out of the running of this. He's three laps down. And here comes Rodriguez to the inside. Gonna go door to door for second. Lap cars in the way of Day John Weeks. He has to bob and weave past Kyle Collins and Daniel Bouchard. And Bouchard and Collins are very slow. And they could play a hindrance. They are hovering around the minimum speed range. And the officials are going to be keeping tabs on that more so than usual. Because in the previous years, lap cars have been a big pain in the Daytona 500. Because this is such a long race. We see cars get taken out. And they try and complete the race as much as possible for points but the drivers and the teams know that if they are out there they need to be able to meet reach minimum speed and that will be tapped by the officials further up Dejon Weeks continues to run the Daytona 500 out front and in the lead but Jordan Davis the defending three-time champion of the series is there and here comes Schroederberg with a heck of a run with Sanford he's trying to get the outside of Davis Davis throws the block he tries to go to the inside, but has that cover too. The entire field single file to the inside of Dejon Weeks. They're trying to shuffle him back. No doubt, so far in this race, Dejon Weeks has been the Pied Piper. and has been the best driver on the Super Speedway right now and has led the most so far in this Daytona 500. Schwellenberg has been just as good, if not as well, second best to Dejon Weeks in this race. However, they're getting shuffled back. Schwellenberg trying to shove his way back to the outside of Davis. Davis trying to clear him. Rodriguez is in the lead in the number nine Napa Toyota. But not for long. Here comes Dylan Schwellenberg. The ponies under that hood. He just goes down in turn three. Those Yamp cars seem like they have very good speed down the straightaway. They can just get off the corner so well. And Schwellenberg's to the lead again. How about this guy here? Sean Perkins for Roush Family Racing. Their other main car of Jack Halleck has crashed out of the Daytona 500. But Sean Perkins, a two-time winner of this race, is up in the top 10 trying to win his third Daytona 500. James Sorafox pushing him along, trying to push Jordan Davis, last year's champion, past Jesse Turner. But Perkins is up here, coming up to about near halfway. It'll be 22 laps to go until halfway in the race. And it's interesting to see some of the guys that are up here contending for the lead. Rodriguez Weeks, Schwellenberg Sanford, Davis Turner, Perkins Jones, Martin Silverfox. Shelley's back up here with Acosta and Burton. Those are the guys contending for the lead right now. There's 13 cars up here contesting for the lead. Lap traffic all race will be a factor and it is already playing a factor. Lap cars they just ran up on. Harple England. They just ran up on, they're trying to get around them, but further back, some more drivers have been very hard to get around, like Daniel Bouchard for Cloud9 Racing. Many drivers are losing touch with the lead pack now, and it only takes just that one moment. It just takes one thing to kick you out of the lead pack and out of contention for the Daytona 500. It is still early days and early laps in this Daytona 500, and anything goes really 
if there is no caution, that's a horrible block by England. I don't know why England would throw the block. Nearly contact down there in turn one. They make it work. But it is so crucial at any point to keep your name in the mix of things because we're not guaranteed to have another caution. We may go green all the way to the end, which could be unlikely, but you have to give that into cons some consideration. You have to stay up in that lead draft and do all you can. Pit stops are looming. These guys will be on pit road in about 10 laps. Only five laps later for Matthew Rodriguez. He is all by himself other than Dylan Schwellenberg. He's down pit road, same with Schwellenberg. Interesting strategy there for both of them. They came in by themselves. Now here comes a whole lot of people. Everyone coming down pit road a little earlier than I expected, but there are many drivers on pit road the last lap after those guys pitted. Trouble turn two, Sean Perkins, Vance Caldwell have made contact. Perkins in the 0-9 had stayed out there and he keeps on going, no caution. But that might be a race ender for Sean Perkins. His attempt to make it three Daytona 500 victories seems like it could be up. Sean Perkins, even though this is a one-off attempt, you never know if you'll ever get another chance to get back in a ride. You don't know when your next one will be, and you always have to take that into consideration as well. And Sean Perkins, champion of the series, a two-time 500 winner, is out. We don't know if he'll be back. And Daniel Bouchard has stopped down in turn two. His car has died. And many cars stopping there. Bobby Jones and Dejon Weeks have tangled down in turn two. Many cars checking up to keep from running in the back of everyone. There was a spin down in turn two. Bobby Jones and Dejon Weeks had made contact. And how severe is that damage? Very severe for Dejon Weeks. Weeks, the dominant car of this race has just been involved in a crash off turn two, getting up to speed after leaving pit road. Bobby Jones as well. He had a car that was capable of winning the Daytona 500 as well. Maybe not the most dominant car, but he was up there with a chance to have something going for him. And he's coming back to pit road. Here's what happened. Bouchard had stopped on the back, or down in turn two. Weeks had slowed down, but Bobby Jones had ran into the side of him. Acosta and Jones were not wanting to stop there for the 61. Weeks decided he was going to wait there. Not sure what Weeks was doing. He could have went around like everyone else. I think that's what he was thinking about doing at the last minute. And then he's seen that Jones and Acosta were coming by. And that's probably going to be it for his Daytona 500 hopes. This has shaken up a lot of things after pit stops. We're five laps to go until halfway in this race. Matthew Rodriguez is your leader all by himself. This has shaken up so much what that has happened. Luke Martin's in second. Eric Burton is in third. Fourth is Dylan Schwellenberg. He is past Hayden Klein. Klein is in the middle of this as well. He's fifth place. And then sixth place is, there's a slow car there, Kyle Collins holding up Ryan Acosta. Then there's Eric Demax, James Sewer, or that's Carson Scott, my bad. He is not in this pack. John Art is in this pack, he's in eighth. And then there's Jordan Davis and Charles Sanford. To round out the top 10, Cody Lamas, Jeffrey Lynn, James Shelley, Jesse Turner, James Sewer, Fox, and Hannah Allen are in this middle of this pack. But the dominant car of the day, Dajon Weeks, is still out there trying to ride around for points and hopefully a caution will come out for him because right now Dajon Weeks is on the lead lap and if he can get that repaired, he may be able to hang in the lead draft. We know how fast that 38 car is. If they can get that car repaired, he could be still competitive to hang on to the lead draft. Trouble off turn two. Jordan Davis and Charles Sanford have crashed from ninth and 10th. Sanford back up the racetrack as cars come by down and turn the trioval. Jordan Davis, his hopes of the 500 are over again. Not a winner in the 500. Shelley's in there. Cody Lamas has damage. Jeffrey Lynn looks like he might have damage. Jesse Turner, Hannah Allen may have something. Sanford went spinning through the grass. Doesn't look like there's many cars involved, but Bobby Jones was in this one again. Here's what happened, Bobby Jones, we know he was slow after that incident. Comes up in front of Jordan Davis into Sanford. Man, there they go. 
but it really happens down here past the start finish. Davis comes up in front of Cody Lamas. Sam, uh, I don't know how much control the 99 had through the grass, but he comes right back up the racetrack into Lamas. Lynn there as well. Everyone involved kind of flat spot the tires. Some drivers got away with very minimal, if no damage, but some drivers does have a lot of incidents from that. Looks like James Sorfox may have some right side damage from that as well. And the tough thing here with the new point system the way it is, lap 99 out of 200, Jordan Davis will not get any points for this Daytona 500. He is out and is going to be classified as a non-finisher of this race. And many drivers, I believe every driver that retires here will not get points, I don't believe. Cody Lamas, lap 99, if he doesn't retire, if he retires, he will not get points either. He'll be classified as a non-finisher. Oh man, that is terrible timing as well for a car to go out of the race. And wow, Roush and James trying to go by him. Wow, this changes a lot here. As we get back to the restart. Matthew Rodriguez is the leader over Schwellenberg, Luke Martin, Eric Burton, Hayden Klein. Eric DeMax, Ryan Acosta, John Art, Jeffrey Lynn, Charles Sanford, Jeff James, James Sorafox, Hannah Allen, Jesse Turner, Dejon Weeks did get repairs and did stay on the lead lap. James Shelley is the last car on the lead lap there in 16th. Dylan Young on the inside of Matthew Rodriguez there. He is three laps down, hoping to get, actually, I think he might be, I, st I still think he's three laps down. He might have beat Matthew Rodriguez at the line. He's trying to get one of his laps back, but this really opens the door for many drivers to try and win this Daytona 500 now with some of the big contenders like Dejon Weeks, Jordan Davis, Charles Sanford, all of them getting involved in that collision off turn four. The amazing thing to note here, many laps after that restart, we're, see we're seeing many people drive away from the second pack, but we have relatively let's see Ryan Acosta he this is eight cars in the lead draft for the lead of the Daytona 500 and further back everyone else in a second pack they are not relatively off that pace off the pace that much but Dejon Weeks for sure that damage is severe enough that the really the dominant car in the first half of the race is not gonna be a factor for the Daytona 500 further up though we have a new leader Luke Martin for CM Racing to the inside of Matthew Rodriguez off turn two. Martin took the lead at the line. He's got an assist there from Eric to Max. Dylan Young trying to stay like two laps down there in the one car. Young trying to get back a few laps and trying to stay in contention. He could play a factor later on here. But Martin in the zero for CM Racing. He's got a teammate of John R in the middle of this as well. You have Martin to Max, Rodriguez. You see, like Martin to Max, Rodriguez, Art, Schwellenberg, Klein, Burton, and Acosta. All of these guys up here contending for the lead and could be Daytona 500 champions. If they stay in this pack and they, there's no other driver that contends later on, and I don't believe any other driver outside of these front eight are going to win the 500 because they seem like they're damaged and off the pace. I don't think there's anybody other than maybe Jesse Turner, but Turner does have catastrophic, not catastrophic, minimal damage. Same with Hannah Allen further back and Jeffrey Lynn. All of them have minimal damage. So the winner of the Daytona 500 have possibly been eliminated down to eight cars. And we're just past halfway in the race. Eric DeMax and teammate Matthew Rodriguez one two. Dylan Young continues to race really hard with these guys to try and get one of his laps back. But further up, the race for the lead continues to be very feisty. Three wide for the lead. The Rodriguez racing car is trying to work together, but they're being split up. Matthew, Luke Martin, however, used to own that race team. Matthew Rodriguez now owns it, but that used to be a Martin, Martin Motorsports team. And Luke Martin in the zero car, comes out of retirement to drive for CM Racing in a one-time basis for this year. One-year contract for Martin. We don't know if he'll be back for 2021. Obviously, it's early days, but Martin for CM Racing has shown out here in Daytona so far. And Luke Martin, the guy that has done everything to, there is to win 
in every situation possible. Martin has won a lot of key events, a lot of races, 20 wins in his career, never a Daytona 500, five times a runner-up in the championship. He sits up here second place in the 500 with 80 laps to go and in a good position to try and win this 500. Schwellenberg, he has got to be licking his chops as well in the 88 car. He's possibly been one of, if not one of the best cars out there. Eric DeMax too. Both drivers sat on the front row for this Daytona 500. And they're sitting behind Dylan Young, a lap car, leading this pack around. And Eric DeMax goes back out front, but Schwellenberg keeping his foot in it, making it three wide, but not enough to stay with Eric DeMax. This pack of race cars is about to run up on another big pack of race cars. See how that plays out. 75 laps to go in this Daytona 500. Eric DeMax has had a roller coaster of a career. Eric DeMax has been let go, fired, and has dropped down to the lower series more times than I can count. He has had to prove himself over and over again. And here he is for Rodriguez Racing, really showing his case. He bobs and weaves through this lap traffic, trying to stay out front. It continues to be an eight horse battle for the lead. And it could be that all the way till the bitter end. John Art and Hayden Klein looks like they possibly got the worst end of the stick there. Hayden Klein obviously doesn't have a very good handling race car, but he's still up here in contention to win this Daytona 500. But John Art just kind of drove around him and is right back up the lead pack here again. Matthew Riguez is there. Art going to try and get back up there. He doesn't want to lose the draft. He wants to try and stay in the hunt. Eric, De Eric DeMax continues to lead this pack around, but Hayden Klein needs to get past these lap cars and needs to get back up there or, or else he'll fall out of the lead draft. And it looks as though Hayden Klein has fell out of the lead draft. So Klein has been knocked out of the lead draft due to lap cars. Eric Burton looks like he's a little sh struggling there with lap cars. Carson Scott got in his way a little bit, but further up, Eric DeMax continues to move his way around the racetrack every which way he wants to to hold his ground in the lead. Ryan Acosta in the 45, he kind of has no friends out there. He's getting a push there from Matthew Riguez, but Ryan Acosta, he's been kind of ridiculed in the media from not winning the last two seasons. He won in 2017 out at Daytona in the July race, but he hasn't won in two seasons. It's been a while for Ryan Acosta, long winless drought. And how about that run by Matthew Riguez? Matthew Riguez went from the top side, very top side, down to the bottom. He's looking to take the lead from his teammate, but his teammate, oh, not gonna throw a big block on him. And Rodriguez looks like he's gonna be able to get the inside of Eric DeMax. They could be coming to pit road. He is. Matthew Riguez all by himself. Eric DeMax as well has came down pit road. However, nobody else has decided to come in as early as the Rodriguez racing cars. Luke Martin is out front. However, here they all come. Luke Martin's on pit road. Ryan Acosta's on pit road. Dylan Schwellenberg's on pit road as well. Who's the drivers that stayed out? I think it's only Eric Burton. Eric Burton and John Art decided they're gonna stay out and they're the last of the leaders to pit. Well, after pit stops, here is how everything shapes up. Three cars are together for the lead. Three drivers. Eric DeMax is out front. He got the benefit. The Rodriguez Racing Cars played that to perfection. They're up here. Three guys. Eric DeMax, Matthew Riguez, and Luke Martin. That's the front three. Everyone else is a lap car here. And then you see Dylan Schwellenberg, Eric Burton, and Ryan Acosta. They're hoping to work together to run these guys back down. But it's going to be a tall order. Like I mentioned before the race. You have to be there at the end. You have to try and manage every pit stop. You cannot lose ground on pit stops. And these guys have. And will that play back into hurting them later on in the race? We have one more pit stop in the frame. Burton's there. Then there's John Art in the seven. And then Hayden Klein further back all by himself. That is only eight drivers on the lead lap. Further back, Eric Burton leads over Matthew Riguez and Luke Martin. Oh, trouble! One in the top three, Matthew Riguez. His chances of the 500 are done. He has been involved in a crash with Jesse Turner. As more of the leaders come flying by, they miss the accident. 
Dejon Weeks is involved. They scraped the wall slightly. Shouldn't be that much of a factor, though. But Dom Caps was involved in that. But more importantly, Matthew Rodriguez has been taken out of this one. And I don't know what happened down in turn three, but his chances of a second Daytona 500 crown is over. Here it is. Rodriguez trying to go up the middle three wide on Scott Roush and Jesse Turner. Dayton Weeks, an innocent bystander there. But Rodriguez, that was almost like an, a move you didn't need to make. With only three cars in that lead pack with 50 laps to go. That is going to be devastating. Here it is for Matthew Rodriguez. This is going to be a defining moment for him in his hopes for the Daytona 500. He'll look back on this moment. And it looks as though we're seeing that looks like Scott Roush. He's coming in the corner really fast. This is going to be looked back on as a defining moment for Matthew Rodriguez. Going into turn three. Uh, going up the middle, and we know going up the middle, making it three wide in turn three is hard because that is a fast corner. It's a very tight corner. And Roush on the inside, he's taking his own line, but he, he, he's got to make a tight corner. He's going very fast, and it's just hard to keep it down there. And you got to think those guys on the outside are kind of pinching Roush there, and Rodriguez put his nose where he shouldn't have been. That's all you can really say about that accident. As brutal as it's going to feel, Caps also gets slammed by Scott Roush. But as brutal as that sounds, Matthew Rodriguez inadvertently really made a move he shouldn't have been making. And it's going to hurt his chances. And not even hurt. I, this is not going to make him a Daytona 500 champion. This is going to take him out of the hunt. His car is not going to be as fast as it once was. On board with Rodriguez. As we get ready for 46 laps of racing to go, Technically, we have eight guys in the mix of things for the win. However, seven of them are going to be up to speed to win this one. Who are you going to take to win the 500 at this stage? Who's your pick? You have basically seven, eight if you want to be very optimistic. Martin, who has never won the 500. He has been so close before. Aren't. Had to work his way up the ranks. Never a winner in the Sony Cup Series. He's there in second, two team cars. Eric DeMax has been fast all speed weeks. He's only got one win to his name. He sits there in third. Eric Burton has never won this race. He has been so good in his career. He's a champion of the series. He'd love to get a win in this race. Dylan Schwellenberg in the 88. He'd love to get his uh, first win in the 88 car. Schwellenberg is there in the five. Hayden Klein in the 08. He's never won the Daytona 500. He came close in 2018. He's looking close here in 2020. Hayden Klein, the Cinderella story. Could it be for Hayden Klein? Could Hayden Klein upset the Daytona 500 and win today? We've seen that he's got a car capable of making these moves. I've talked to Hayden Klein during Speed Weeks. Klein has said that he's got a car. These car Hayden Klein's car, he said that this is the fastest race car I've ever had for my own team during Speed Weeks. And we're hoping to be a part of the action. And Hayden Klein is a part of the action. And he's up here pushing Dylan Schwellenberg but up towards the lead, Eric DeMax trying to split up the CM Racing cars. CM Racing looking to put Chevy up top. Maybe it made some contact further back. I thought I heard some contact further back, but they keep on going. But Luke Martin leading this pack around. Martin has been so close to winning these marquee events. Martin has been given, has given the opportunity for drivers, man, Burton nearly turned row there, but Martin has hired on many drivers to drive for him in the season's past. 
Eric Demax comes to name there. Eric Demax, Matthew Rodriguez. Oh, he, he didn't give Matthew Rodriguez a chance, but Eric Demax. There's a few drivers on the grid here that Luke Martin gave them the opportunity in their rookie year to drive for him and let them build a name for themselves. Luke Martin has been given the has been the driver and the team owner to let others prove themselves and be a bigger name than he has in some of these events. Martin is hoping to get to victory lane in the Daytona 500. He has always wanted to win this race. Can he get it done? He leads over one of the best cars, all speed weight still in Schmallenberg to the inside. He's got teammate Eric Burton there, but Martin's got his teammate of John Arndt. This is gonna be a big fight down to the end. We have one more pit stop in the in the frame here. Ryan Acosta has lost out here. There's only six cars in the lead draft that are on the lead lap and can win this race. Schwellenberg and Martin side by side. Fearing that Dylan Young has even more issues for that one car. But further back, man, the 0-3 of Scott Roush very off the pace there. And Scott Roush holding up these drivers. Luke Martin in the zero. Way out front. That's usually on other tracks that would be very important and very good for him. But here at Daytona, they're just going to run them back down. Luke, or Hayden Klein had lost the draft there in the 0-8, but he has gotten right back up with these guys. Virtue of Scott Roush holding up the leaders. The leaders have ran down Luke Martin, and they blew right by him. Eric Demax out front. As we come up to about 30 laps to go. Hayden Klein again losing the draft. Something may be amiss with Hayden Klein. He is not able to suck up to them guys as much as... He was hoping for and how much he was doing earlier. Klein in the 0-8. The Cinderella story might not be, but running this well in the 500 is still a great run nonetheless. So we have five guys gunning for the 500 win right now. Schwellenberg to the inside for the lead. Lap cars are going to continue to be a major factor here. Demax and Martin side by side. Here comes John Arndt. John Ort beating and banging on Eric Demax there. This is the time of the race where you can get aggressive. And Art in the three car stayed out of trouble most of the race, pushing his way past. Eric Burton trying to claw his way back up to the leaders. He has fell way back after lap cars have held him up. Burton trying to stay with the leaders, but John Art has taken the race lead. As soon as that happens though, John Arndt gets held up by even more lap cars. Lap cars continue to be a huge factor as Schwellenberg and Demax have pulled away by themselves. Man, these all cut blown engine in the back. Ryan Acosta, the second Allen Family Racing Team car that today has lost a motor. This time, 177 laps in. And Acosta is going to fall out of the race and fall out of contention. And there's not even going to be a caution, I don't believe. There will not be a yellow for Ryan Acosta falling out of the race. Luke Martin is going to come down pit road early. Luke Martin, his quest to win the Daytona 500. He's on pit road, the first of the leaders. A lap later, John Art follows him. The CM Racing Cars, they noticed what happened with the Rodriguez Racing Cars when they short pitted a few pit stops earlier. Short pitting is very, it, it helps you a lot to make up time. And the CM Racing guys have known that and they've seen that. They're trying to win the 500 together. Trouble down in turn two, Vance Codwell and Sean Harple have spun down to the apron. And Vance Codwell, very smartly, that from the last time out on the duels. And the duels, Vance Codwell backed right back up on the racetrack. Didn't do that here in the Daytona 500, but Codwell, the first race for Texas Motorsports. And for him in the Daytona 500, Codwell brings out the caution. We're going to get a replay. Here's what happened. Vance Codwell, oh, Harple lost it out from under him, slid up into Codwell, and they spun around. And the caution flag is out, and this hurts CM Racing. CM Racing's chances of winning the Daytona 500 probably done and you want to know why they're a lap down see them racing 
with a realistic chance to win the Daytona 500 with Luke Martin and CM Racing, or Luke Martin and John Art. They were going to team up together, and they fall one lap down, and that is going to blow for them. And I know that is going to be a gut wrenching punch in the gut for both Art and especially Luke Martin. Cars are on pit road, and this is going to be big for them. I think there's like what only like four cars, five cars on the lead lap. Really, only four drivers at the end of this one, and it's been a survival of a race. There has not been that many crashes, but it has been the type of race where you need to be there at the end. And it looks like it's going to be a fight in the last few laps between Schwellenberg, Demax, Klein, and Burton. As we get set and ready to go, this is going to seriously hurt for CM Racing to see themselves. Unless they can get a caution here. If they can get a caution, they can still get back in, but they need it really soon. And they need to be ahead of the leader. Eric Demax is out front. With Eric Burton in second. Dylan Schwellenberg in third, fourth Hayden Klein, fifth Matthew Rodriguez. The green flag is back in the air. We have 16 laps to go. Luke Martin did a great job restarting there. But Eric Demax, he kind of has no friends other than Matthew Rodriguez. If Rodriguez can hang with these guys, he could still be a threat. And he's clear of the lap traffic. Lap traffic of Dylan Young really slowed the bottom. But up front, Eric Burton. And the 28 Ford has went by Eric DeMax for the lead. And he has his teammate Dylan Schwellenberg behind him. And right now, those Fords have to be working together. They want a Ford to win. And Eric DeMax is really the only other threat right there in between them. Hayden Klein's up there in third place. How about this for Hayden Klein? He's still in the hunt. Dylan Schwellenberg to the inside of Eric Burton. Burton never winning the 500. None of these guys have ever won the Daytona 500, the front four. But they have a chance to do so, and they, they probably will. It'll probably be one of these four unless they wreck each other. Hayden Klein bottoming up of the racetrack. They're three wide back there for third place. This is going to be interesting. Down to the wire. Here it comes Burton with a heck of a run on his teammate there. He's going to stall up right behind him. John Art, Luke Martin, how are they going to play? They are lap cars, and they're going to try and get back on the lead lap if possible. But time is ticking. Eric Demax moving his way up to third. Aiden Klein, the fourth car, up here battling for this Daytona 500. He is stuck behind the CM Racing cars, and he cannot find a way around. And Demax easily by himself to the inside of Eric Burton. You would think Burton may have been more defensive than that. But Burton slices back to third. Eric Burton in the 28 car. That team's a part-time ride for Yamp Motorsports. But Yamp Motorsports is sitting pretty right now with two of their race cars up here contesting for the win of the Daytona 500. Coming back around to be 12 laps to go. But this could be a move here. Eric Tomax is the inside of Dylan Schwellenberg. Eric Burton coming to help. Schwellenberg gets a little bit of an assist there on the outside. Hardly any help from Burton, but Burton back to the inside of Eric DeMax. He kind of stalled out whenever he moved back to the inside. The winner will probably come from one of these three. It'll be 12 laps to go when we come back. Schwellenberg, DeMax, Burton. Those are the guys up here, but you have Hayden Klein there too. Eric DeMax trying it again to the inside of Dylan Schwellenberg. Schwellenberg lets him have the bottom. Schwellenberg has been so good on the top. Everyone's been so good on the top. You got to think, though, maybe giving up the bottom isn't too good when you only have a few race cars with you. Here comes Burton looking maybe three wide. Can't get enough of a run. And Demax is able to get to the inside. This is where you really need to be in this corner. Martin and Art, they've kind of held back a little bit. They don't want to be really much in the frame of this. But Demax with a big pass late in this race, has moved his way into the lead, closing on 10 laps to go. Here comes Dylan Schwellenberg, he has a run, but Burton slams the door. These guys have to work together to get back around that 10 car. And if I'm Eric Tamax, I'm just sitting there wondering what can I do? What can I do to win this Daytona 500, the great American race? 
10 laps to go. Schwellenberg arguably has been way faster than his teammate Eric Burton. He's going to go to the inside. He wants to try and challenge that 10 car. If Schwellenberg can get a good enough run on Demax, Burton can give the shove pass to win the 500 for the team. Hayden Klein is still tailing up right there. Martin and Arndt still staying out of it. They don't want to be in the middle of this right now. The caution looks like it's not going to fly unless it's further back, and I don't see it happening unless it's in this pack as they race for position. Here comes Schwellenberg. He has a run on Eric Demax. Demax to the, in, to the outside. The outside groove has been pretty good. Burton there in the 28, going to try and give up shove there to the 88. And Dylan Schwellenberg, a very crucial pass with very little cars up here in the lead draft. It is crucial to make your passes where you can because it's so hard to make them when you only have so much momentum there. And Demax with a crossover from the high side. And Demax, what a move. You gotta, that is great driving by Eric Demax. He lost the lead there for momentarily. But he took it right back with the momentum from the high side. Schrellenberg kind of, really, that wasn't the best move to try and cover to Max. He should have held the bottom. Shouldn't allow that to happen. But Schrellenberg still has his teammate there behind him and is able to make something happen here at the end. They're very much bunched together, and they could get a run there off the back straight away. Oh, man, lap cars. Lap cars of Dom Caps, Scott Roush, Dylan Young. We're hearing that the officials are looking into this because we're hearing that those cars are very slow right now and couldn't possibly not be running minimal speed. There'll be seven laps to go this time by Art and even Klein, more importantly, has lost to the draft. Martin is starting to fall off. And now with only really three cars at this lead draft, Man, Schwellenberg is practically pushing that 10 car. Can he get to the inside of him? Lap cars will be in the frame. This could be the Daytona 500 for lap cars. They go to the inside. That is the best scenario right now. They go right by the lap cars. To Max, holding the bottom for all he can. The front three get away from the lap cars. John Art and Luke Martin, they are one lap down. It is only these three. The 10, the 88, the 28. Six laps to go. Dylan Schwellenberg has his eyes on the 10 car. These guys started 1-2 together, and they're going to finish 1-2, but where are they going to finish? They might not finish 1-2. Eric Burton's still there, but he is not tucked up behind Dylan Schwellenberg like he needs to. Schwellenberg may need Burton to win this race. It is going to be super tough to win this race by yourself. But we know if anyone's gonna be able to do it, a Yamp car could do it. The Yamp cars have been so fast. Eric Demax, his dad of Eugene Demax, a very known successful Sony Cup Series driver in the series. Five laps to go. Eric Demax, his career has been a complete roller coaster. It's been well documented. Many times. Man, he bottoms up. That turns one and two. Could be his Achilles heels. Schwellenberg is there. He knows where his weakness is. Burton is losing touch, those guys. You got to think Schwellenberg is pushing Demax hard. And with that, they're losing Burton. More lap cars possibly to deal with. But Demax... And even Schwellenberg, and Hardy's National Series champion, comes in the series, came in with Curtis Racing, got the call to go over to Yamp Motorsports, a big time team on the, in the series. As you see, the 10's really struggling in one and two. Schwellenberg is taking the beat to the inside. He kind of needs to get the run down the front straight away to really pressure the 10 into a mistake. So far, Eric Demax is doing everything perfect. Eric Demax, Dylan Schwellenberg, it's the young guys in the series, the guys that have recently came in the last few years, trying to win the Daytona 500. The laps are ticking away. 
three laps to go. Lap traffic could be a factor here. And DeMax pushes up. But Schwellenberg doesn't look much better. He's a little bit better. Eric Burton, if he's holding back, he's going to need to really challenge hard. But he is still too far back, and he looks like he's losing them. Lap cars could play a factor. We've seen it happen before. Bur DeMax goes high. Lap car coming to pit road. Dejon Weeks in the 38 going a lap down. Did not get in the way of Eric DeMax. It was very professional for Dejon Weeks to not get in the way there. But, oh, contact there. Weeks and his teammate Burton made contact. They're really slow here. This is going to allow Schwellenberg and even Burton maybe to get in this. Samuel England in the way there of Eric DeMax. DeMax needs to get the inside. He does. A lap and a half to go for the Daytona 500. Burton definitely not going to win this one. It's between DeMax and Schwellenberg. Schwellenberg took a peek in turn three. Coming back to the start finish line. Weeks is to pit road. He's going to retire the car. But to the white flag, the final lap of the 24th annual Daytona 500. It, who is it going to be here? DeMax or Schwellenberg? Eric DeMax looking for redemption, trying to prove his case in the series. Schwellenberg takes a beat in the inside. He kind of bottoms there too. That has been DeMax's Achilles heels in these last 10 laps. And I think he managed to hold off one last good challenge. But Schwellenberg is going to throw one last challenge down in turn three and four. He's backed up a little bit. Here comes Schwellenberg, going to give it one last go. But can DeMax hold him at bay? Schwellenberg is trying. Here he comes, drawing even to the line. The run to the checkers. Who's it going to be? Photo finish, but it's Eric DeMax who wins the Daytona 500. Dylan Schwellenberg threw everything he had at him. And really, if he had had that one moment, if he could have done that and had one more lap, Schwellenberg was in the preferred groove with it only being those two cars. But Eric to Max, this is a big celebration for Rodriguez Racing to win the Daytona 500. And for Eric to Max, this guy, Eric to Max, a roller coaster of a career for sure. And you got to think that monkey is finally off his back and that he is here. His dad of Eugene DeMax never won the Daytona 500. Eric DeMax has a leg up on him. Eric DeMax, his second career win in the Sony Cup Series. And it comes on the biggest stage. Eric DeMax is the winner of the 24th annual Daytona 500. And he'll be remembered as that. A Daytona 500 champion for many years to come. With it only being two cars at the finish, I thought that was a pretty good finish. A pretty good race. It was cat and mouse. That was what it was like. Between two guys, I know many people, myself included, would love to have seen 20, 30, even 40 cars coming across the line, charging to the line. Three wide, charging the line. But with it only being two cars, this race really shows that the Daytona 500 is a true endurance race. We didn't have that many cars, I thought, that was in a collision. As many guys were involved in a crash or some sort of accident. However, seen here, there's 23 cars that finished at the end. But there were a couple incidents that took out a many, many race cars and eliminated some racers. You had to be there at the end. And you had to be, and it, it's not by luck. Eric DeMax, Dylan Schwellenberg, they were out front all race. And like I said at the start of the, this one, I really thought being up front and being in the lead pack, being in the leaders pack, after pit stop, after pit stop, after pit stop, that's the way you win this race. That's really how it's been for the last few seasons. And it kind of proved it this year. 
Hayden Klein, Eric Burton, Matthew Rodriguez, they finished top five, but you gotta think, more importantly, Klein and Burton. I mean, more so Klein, I mean, wasn't really there until a little past halfway. And it, that in itself is being there and just being there with a the clean race car and staying out of trouble. But for sure, Eric DeMax and Dylan Schwellenberg played the best race, and they did it right. Matthew Rodriguez, he stayed out back at the first half of the race, and after pit stops, his crew was fast enough to get him in the lead back. And he stayed there all race until he made one incorrect judgment going up the middle. Top five run for Matthew Rodriguez, though. On the lead lap. And you got to really feel for Luke Martin and John Arp. One strategy away from possibly a win in the Daytona 500. Really, you have to be almost perfect to win this race. James Shelley finishes 8th. And how about Monster Energy Racing gets in their first ever race back, gets ninth with Carson Scott, a top 10 finish. And Jeffrey Lynn gets a top 10 as well. Now, there is some cars that I'm hearing that are under investigation for driving under the minimum speed and being a factor in the finishing results. However, I do believe, given the circumstances, I thought the lap cars behaved themselves very well this race, and I thought they managed to stay out of the way very well, and the CM Racing cars were nice to see that they didn't play a role in who, were, who won this race as they stayed out of it. Anyway, Eric DeMax, he is already celebrating. He is the Daytona 500 champion for 2020. Let's get you to our finishing results after the Daytona 500.